Pat, I guess a lot of people are probably looking for different sources of, you know, alternative and sustainable types of fuel. How do you see corn and corn heating kind of fitting into the picture of uh, people that might want to consider it as something that they're going to use? Well, uh, corn is grown every year. So, you know, if you're burning uh, wood or wood pellets, you're going to wait 30 or 40 years for a tree to come back. Whereas corn, we can grow every year, uh, burns hotter, cleaner. So uh, I think that's the way to be going. The rest of the country has been doing this process for 40 years. Uh, here in the Northeast, we use 80% of the oil. So we're trying to get away from that. Right. And as you said, you're the only corn farm exclusively for corn that uses heat in Rhode Island, in one of five in New England. How do you see kind of the rest of Rhode Island learning about what you do and perhaps coming out and seeing you and maybe even becoming a, you know, a uh, believer in what you're doing? Well, uh, since we started this, uh, we've seen the sales increase on the fuel uh, five times the amount we sold the first year. And it seems to be increasing every year. Uh, people slowly getting the information and learning about it. Uh, I really think the multi-fuel stove is the way to go. That way you're not uh, relegated to one source of fuel. Uh, you can go to the wood pellet, the corn, wheat, oats, barley, walnut shells, cherry pits. So if prices change, then they have other options as far exactly. as they're using for heat. If you're fortunate enough to live next to the pie company that uh, you can get free cherry pits, you know, you heat your house for free that way, which I know some guy does. So, right. so you can get creative with it. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, you can. Okay. Pat, tell us a little about the combine here and how it gets from the corn to from the field to the silo. Well, it's a pretty simple process. The combine will go out to the field, harvest the corn. What happens is the corn is uh, brought up into the combine. The kernels are stripped right off the cob. The kernels go up into a hopper behind the driver. All the other product is uh, ejected back out onto the field. That hopper is filled. It'll hold about 270 bushels, which is about 15,000 uh, pounds of corn. When that's full, Shoot, we'll come over, we fill a truck, and we bring it into the farm to the silo, and uh, from there we dry it and put it into another silo. So uh, once the uh, combine has harvested the corn and it's brought in here to the farm, it's taken into this silo that looks like it has legs and a cone on it. That's called the wet silo. Then from there it's put through the dryer. The dryer, once it's dried down to the moisture content that we want, it goes into this big storage silo. Once it's in the storage silo, when the guys are ready to bag, they'll run some through this big auger up to the top of the bagging building. The top of the ba bagging building, that hopper will hold five ton of corn. Uh, they'll bag up all that, and then uh, when it's all bagged up, they'll start the process all over again. This one is $3,600 where the Amazer Blaze stove was $1,200. You can see, but the difference is this, you just turn a knob, it automatically starts. The Amazer Blaze, you had to manually start the fire. Every, in here you'll see, in here this will turn, you'll see an auger in there turning. Well, in the firebox in the Amazer Blaze, there's no auger. So every 18 to 24 hours, you have to take a tool like a top little tire iron and pop out what they call the clinker. What that's doing is that's breaking the clinker up and it drops it into the ash pan. Um, Harmon gives you two of those augers. Every two to three days, you switch augers. Put the auger that's dirty outside. A day later, the stuff just falls off. You try to hit it with a hammer the first day, mm -hmm. and it's solid. This will heat up to 1,400 square feet, so I have about a 900 square foot house, so, and I have two stories. I, I do have a small house, it's easier to heat. The, what the Harmon has done is all your heat is in here and getting forced out that fan, or you get a little bit of radiant heat. The Amazer Blaze, I could put my hand all over that one. It didn't get hot on the outside. The only thing that got hot was the glass. With this, you get some radiant heat, so you're getting a little bit more heat from it, too. This is our exhaust from the stove that you just saw inside. As you can see, I can put my hand on here. Very, very cool. Uh, you know, it doesn't get hot. It's like a dry event out the side of your house. Burns clean, no smoke. The only time you really see any smoke is when you first ignite the uh, stove. Other than that, burns clean. Well, great. Thanks, Pat. We appreciate the tour. Thank you.